Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hangdal Chita. So our, our intrepid friend Sid, always journeying and searching to express the Dharma properly, decided that he was going to attempt to return to the marketplace and to walk joyously among the people expressing the purity of Dharma. I'm taking a, an example from um, who Master Unsan refers to as the fat guy, more commonly known as Hotai. Sid picked up a bag and he thought, this is going to be the perfect way to express the Dharma. I'm going to fill this bag with gifts. Just like Hotai in the old stories, he would give a gift to a child or to a beggar. And, and so Sid gathered up what little money he had and he purchased a bunch of gifts and he filled the bag with them and he threw it over his shoulder and he journeyed into the marketplace to, to radiate the Dharma among the people. Walking into town, he found a small child looking glum sitting on the step of a of a store and said, what's wrong? The child said, ah, oh, my parents are in shopping. I'm just sitting here bored and said, ah, you need a, you need something to play with. And so he opened his bag and he reached down in and he dug around and he pulled out a bunch of asparagus and he handed it to the child and they said, there you go. Threw the bag over his shoulder and wandered off. And the child sat there and looked at the bunch of asparagus, looked at Sid. Sid walked a little farther and found a monk out with his alms bowl. And he said, and what are you doing? And the monk said, I'm, I'm on my, my dana rounds for my, for my meal. Sid said, oh, hold on. Dug around in his bag. Ah, a rubber ball. And he put it right in the guy's bowl, bowed to him and journeyed on. And he walked through the village just enjoying this expression of the Dharma. He gave a book to a blind man, some, some pebbles to a woman who was trying to make stew. He, he gave all his gifts away and felt wonderful about the, all the Dharma that, that he had spread that day. And he turned and looked and the entire town had kind of gathered in the street and was staring at him. And they didn't look as happy as he thought that they should, after all this joyous spreading of Dharma gifts. He was very confused about that and had to had to retreat back to his cell and sit and try and figure out what had gone wrong. And I think we do that a lot of times during our day. We leave, even if we have good intentions, even if we've meditated in the morning, we leave, we leave our bed, you know, or our, our chambers all all you know, zinned and blessed out, and we're going to go out into the world and do the right thing. And then we manage to completely screw everything up. One thing after another. So the joke a lot of times is that Buddhism is the, uh, is the bullet point religion. You know, we have lists, we have endless lists of everything. We have this list and that list and the other list. And one, one of the lists that I, I like to look at is the, uh, the paramitas, the perfections. <clears throat> and we'll talk about the paramitas and how they're, you know, you have to, you have to do these things to attain, you know, realization, or maybe when you attain realization, you do them or it happens simultaneously. And then you get into, well, is it the six or the 10 or the 12 or the other 10 or the nine or which, which set because one group adds this and another group combines these two. And just when you think you figured it out and, and trust me, I did this once I took a piece of paper and I wrote down every parameter I could find. And then I came up across the Bajanga, the insight factors. And I said, ah, oh, crap. Some of these are the same as parameters and some of them are different. And so I wrote them down too. And I had this big running tally and I'm crossing things out that are duplicated and trying to come up with a master list. 
And the master list gets really confusing after a certain point. Now, this isn't to disparage the paramitas or, or the insight factors or the five perfections or any of any whatever personal bullet point helps you center through your day. But what are you supposed to apply? <clears throat> Excuse me. Part of the practice and I will just go back to the, the eightfold path. And each one of those eight, just like the paramitas, and some of them are repeated in the paramitas and the bajanga and the five perfections and whatever, too. There, it's an endless list. But they start with a term that is usually <clears throat> translated as skillful, right, appropriate. Upaya, skillful action, skillful means, right thought. <clears throat> well, again, what does that mean? Are there times when you find that, unlike some other rules of conduct, Skillful speech, for example, is to not say anything. <clears throat> you always run into those guys. They're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth whether they want to hear it or not. Maybe the truth isn't always the best thing. Maybe if you're holding the hand of someone who's dying and they just want to be comforted and they say, I really look like shit, don't I? You say, no, actually, you look pretty good, I think. Well, we're just going to sit here and hang out. Let's not talk about that. <clears throat> so what's skillful? What's appropriate? What's right? What is the paramita? So getting back into a, into a concept from Mekayana, the diamond paramita, the perfection of the paramita. <laughs> what is appropriate to that moment? Is it generosity? Is it wisdom? Is it action? Is it non-action? What is the appropriate skillful means at that moment in that situation with that person in front of you? <clears throat> who may not want a sermon. They may not want a platitude. Or they may. So diamond paramita is to perfect the perfections to a point where skillful means and skillful action is what comes out of being fully in the situation in the correct way in the way that responds correctly and appropriate, in the way that not only picks the right response, but the right parameter. And for each of us, those answers can be different. If you're like me, maybe you have an anger issue. So patience might be a really good parameter. Not for every situation, but a good one to work on. But what's appropriate, what's skillful, and where do you find that? By delving very deeply and very honestly and shining that light of your meditation directly into your own mind and seeing that you can't find what's there. You're reflecting the situation that's presenting itself to you and then you can act appropriately. 